it's going to the dogs. Nah, it's a good thing though, right? We've got Bree Kuna here. She is a behavioral department assistant with the Arizona Animal Welfare League. Today we're talking about how you can decode your pet's body language. Apparently they're trying to tell us something, right Bree? They are, yeah. Dogs don't have a voice like we do, so right. they can't really speak in a language that we understand. You like my shoes? So it's up to us to kind of figure out what their body's telling us mm -hmm. as well as different vocalizations they might make. So we want to know what the barks, maybe if you have a cat, the meows, or even the wagging mm -hmm. of the tails, but why is this important to know what your animal's trying to say? It's really important because when you can recognize when their behavior changes, mm -hmm. you can recognize what sort of triggers may have caused that, um, but also if they're feeling a little bit stressed or nervous, oh. you can recognize that and take them to an area where they're going to be a little bit more relaxed. Okay. As an animal who's really stressed and not feeling super great, uh, it's really not fair for them to be in that kind of situation. Plus, mm -hmm. they might, um, if they're not taken out, they could potentially, you know, bite or growl or yeah. give some other indication that they're uncomfortable. So we want to make sure our dogs and cats stay nice and healthy and happy and um, feel comfortable where they are. So how do you communicate with your pet, whether you have a dog or a cat, so you can build that bond and start to understand exactly what they are trying to tell you? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to do that. So dogs definitely can, and cats as well, mm -hmm. are can be trained to understand our vocal signals. Okay. So when we say a string of syllables, they'll kind of recognize, okay, I do this behavior and I get this reward. Mm. So working in a low distraction environment with a dog, you can teach them, um, you know, sit and lay down mm -hmm. and calm and you can use different words for that, but you can also use hand signals in your own body language to communicate with them. Now, I know a lot of people do get um, pets from, you know, the Animal Welfare yes. League. They adopt, so sometimes these animals may come from a home where they've been abused or they have a situation and they're not, you know, familiar with you yet. So yeah. how do you build that relationship and know that what they're saying is not, I'm not scared, but I, I want to accept you. How yeah. do you read them? Excellent question. So a lot of times you want to look at the tail position of the dog okay. as well as the way their ears are and their eyes and their mouth. So generally a dog, so Clarabelle right now is feeling pretty relaxed. Her mm -hmm. tail is just kind of hanging calm. down. Um, the base of the tail is always a really good thing to look for. It's really nice that she's situated like this. I know. Just, she's so ready for her close-up. <laughs> yeah, if her tail was positioned really tightly at the base of her rear or tucked underneath her, that okay. shows a little bit of uncertainty and some fear. Um, her ears right now are nice and loose and floppy. She got like a nice yeah, loose mouth as so well. Calm. Her eyes are soft. She's also leaning in for touch. Right. So a dog who's leaning in for touch Aww. is one that wants to seek you that like affection it. and engagement, yeah. whereas one that's sitting more away mm -hmm. and kind of creating more space, they're ones you don't want to force a lot of affection on. Okay. So if you have a new dog in your home and they're kind of shy or even like a cat, can't forget about the cats, they're mm -hmm. awesome too, you want to give them space and give them time to seek attention from right. you and try to start building that bond. Because you need to know the difference between a dog being scared and nervous and excited and playful. Because some yes. dogs can get really fidgety and you think, oh, they want to play, but really they're trying to tell you, I'm a little bit frightened right exactly. now. Exactly, okay. yeah. So sometimes um, if they get really bouncy and all over the place and just not really settling down, that's them trying to escape from the mm -hmm. situation. And they're just trying to get out of there. Um, so bring them to an area that's more calm and they can right. relax. How long does it take? Does it take just depending on the pet? How long it takes, you know, for you to build that communication? Yeah, and understand yeah. It? it really depends on the dog and what their past is like, or what we may or may not know about them. Um, mm -hmm. Generally, what we like to tell our adopters is there's kind of a rule of three. Oh, so three. three days, three weeks, and three months are usually where you'll see different milestones of a dog or cat settling into your home. Three They're, days, three weeks, or three months. Yes. Okay. Three days usually they might be a little bit tired, um, mm -hmm. so kind of figuring out their environment. Right. Three weeks are starting to get the hang of their routine, and by about three months they've really kind of settled into your home. Wow, this is some good information. We have about a minute left, so we want people to know if they are looking to adopt a dog, the um, Arizona Animal Welfare League is a great place to go. Yes. What are some of the things they need to consider before they adopt a dog? Oh, so many things <laughs> to consider. I think the biggest thing is going to be your work schedule and what okay. time commitment you can make to a dog. Because, um, you know, all the training that you do, it's best to do short five to ten minute sessions multiple okay. times throughout the day, uh, but you still have to counter also taking dogs out for walk and feeding them <laughs> and also addressing any medical issues that right. might come up and making sure you're well equipped to afford that care. Because they're a lot of work, but they you know are. what? You can build that relationship, the communication, and you'll have a partner and a friend for life, yes, right? Yes, yes. You're fantastic, Bree. Again, her <laughs> name is Bree Kuna. She's the Behavioral Department Assistant yes. at the Arizona Animal Welfare League. It's AAWL.org. We'll have a link on our website, aztv.com.